last movie, we explored formatting a whole table. In this movie, we'll take it a step further and look at formatting both the data inside the cells and then the cells themselves. First, in my exercise file, let's jump to page 10. I'll press Command-J or Control-J on Windows, type 10, and then Enter to go to page 10. Now I'm going to select my table and press Command-1 or Control-1 on Windows to go to 100% view. And then I'll move it over with the lever hand so I can see it a little bit better once I have my dialog box open. Now you already know that you can edit text and format it inside of a cell. I'll simply double click on this to switch the type tool and place the cursor there. And I could choose this text and I can edit it or I could change its formatting, make it centered or, uh, or change its indents or so on, change its font. All of that's possible uh, easily just by selecting the text. But what if I wanted to apply formatting to a whole bunch of cells? Well, in that case, what I would want to do is, let me undo this, Command-Z or Control-Z on Windows. In that case, I actually want to select the cells that I want to apply it to. And to select the cells, I simply click and drag over them. Now I've selected all of those cells. But if I want to apply formatting to a whole bunch of cells, clicking and dragging is going to be tedious. So instead, I'm going to hold the cursor, I'll just hover it over the left edge of this row and click. And that selects the entire row. If I hover over the top of a column and click, it selects the entire column, no matter how tall the column is. It could be 100 or 200 more rows tall. It'll select all of them. In this case, I want to select the entire table. And so to do that, I can hover over the upper left corner until I see a little black diagonal arrow. And now when I click that, it'll select all the cells in the table. I'm going to go to the Paragraph Styles panel, and I'm going to open up the tables group here, and I have a whole bunch of uh, paragraph styles already prepared. So I'll click on Table Body Text, and you'll see that this paragraph style has been applied to every one of the cells in the table. Now let's do a little bit more formatting. For this header up here, I'm going to select just this row, and I'll apply Table Head. Let me click off here, and you can see that that paragraph style is reversed out from the background. I'll apply a paragraph style to this. In this case, I don't have to select the whole cell because I'm just applying the paragraph style to the text inside the cell. So I'll apply the table superhead to this, and you can see it gets applied there. So this is looking pretty good. Oh, while I'm at it, why don't I also select all of these cells, I'll just drag over those, and then apply the row heads to that. So that gives it a little bit different look just for this column. Now it's time to do a little bit more formatting of the actual fills and strokes in the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my uh, hidden characters, so that's not so distracting. And I'll make sure that the frame edges are turned off in the view menu, so those aren't so distracting. And I can see my actual strokes and fills much more clearly now. To change the formatting of one more cells, I need to select the cell, right? So I'm going to select all the cells in this whole table, and I'm going to open my Cell Options dialog box, which I get by going to the Table menu, Cell Options, Text. Cell options lets me control each and every selected cell. For example, it lets me set the insets of these cells. That is, how far in should the text be from each of these sides of the cell. Currently, it's set to four points. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, so I'm, I make sure the link icon is turned off here, so I can set the uh, top and bottom separately from left and right. And I'm going to increase this using the arrow keys on my keyboard to, uh, well, I could make it bigger or smaller. Uh, I'll set it to just maybe five points. Let's make it a little bit bigger. How about six points? So I now have six points of space at the top and bottom of each cell, and only four on the left and right. I'm going to cover some of these other features in the text panel in a little bit later, vertical justification and, and text rotation and so on. But first, let me jump over to strokes and fills. Whenever you're formatting the strokes and fills of a table, you have to understand this diagram here. This is a very important diagram when messing around with tables. And this diagram works like this. The left edge of this diagram represents the left edge of all the selected cells. So in this case, it's the left edge of the table. The right edge represents the right edge of all the selected cells. In this case, the right edge of the table. And the top, of course, is the top of the table. This is the bottom of the table. And the middle lines represent all of the rows and columns in between, in the middle of the table. In this case, I don't want to adjust the sides of my table, so I'm going to turn off these by clicking on them. I don't want to change the left side, or the right side, or the bottom, 
but on all the other sides, the top and the middle boundaries, I want to change those to a different color, and I'm going to pick none. That simply turns them off. They're gone. I can see this by clicking OK, and then clicking off the table or clicking inside the table to actually preview what's going on here. And we can see that I still have the thin stroke at the bottom and the left and right. Actually, I'll go into uh, preview mode. This will be easier to see in preview mode. That I have the stroke on the left and right and the bottom, but not the top or in between. Let's go back and look at that dialog box again to see if there's anything else we need to change. I'll select the whole table, but this time I'll do it by choosing Table, Select, Table or pressing Command Option A or Control Alt A on Windows. That selects all the cells in the table, and then I go back to the same place, Cell Options. I was looking at Strokes and Fills, and you can see that I've adjusted that. I'm not going to change the cell fill, because that's being controlled by the table options which we looked at in the previous movie. But let's look at Rows and Columns. Here's some interesting stuff. The row height, this is the way that you can adjust the row height. The uh, column widths, the keep options are very interesting because the keep options uh, let us break at a particular point in a, uh, in a table. Uh, let me click OK and I'll show you what I mean. If I wanted to break this table at exactly this row, I would select any cell or click inside of a cell and go to Table, Cell Options. And I could say, start this row in the next column or start this row in the next frame, or on the next odd page, or whatever I want. And when I do that, I'll move it out of the way so you can see, because the preview checkbox is turned on, I can immediately see that that row is starting in the next column, which of course there is no next column right here, so we can't actually see it. Let me set this back to anywhere, and show you one more feature which is kind of interesting, diagonal lines. Because the cursor is flashing in this cell, I can put a diagonal line in that cell, by switching to this panel and then simply clicking on one of these buttons. There's my diagonal line right in just that cell. And I could change its color, let's make it magenta, let's make it thicker, you could make it an X instead. You have a lot of control over what these cells look like. And in this case, I don't like the look of that, so I'm going to hit cancel and go back where I was. Now you don't need the cell options dialog box to control the formatting of your cells for everything. For example, I want to go in here and change the fill color of just this row. So I just select the row, I open swatches, and I'm going to change the fill color. So I click on the fill icon. The fill color is currently 25% dark green. I'm going to change it to 100% dark green. Click enter and click off it so we can see it. And we can see that now I've applied local formatting on top of that default alternating tint stripe, which is a darker green. I'll do the same sort of thing up in this field up here. I'm going to click up in product sales, and I want to select the cell. How do I select the cell if it's just one cell? I can't easily just drag over it. So instead, I press the escape key. The escape key is a little shortcut for if you have the text selected, then it selects the cell. If you have the cell selected, and you hit escape again, it selects the text. So you can go back and forth. In this case, I want the cell selected, and now I'm going to say I want the fill of this to be paper, and I want the stroke of it to be that nice uh, light green color, let's say 25% light green. Now, how thick is that stroke going to be? Well, that's easy to change in the stroke panel. The stroke is going to be, on all four sides of that, 0.5 points thick. If I click off there, you can see that I now have a nice thin stroke on all four sides. If I didn't want the stroke along the bottom, no problem, hit escape. Look, here's our diagram again. In this case, only one cell is selected, so I have a slight different diagram, but it still represents the left edge of that cell, the right edge, and so on. And I'm going to show you a little trick. If you triple click on any of these lines, it deselects everything. So I triple click, and then I'm going to turn on just the cell that I want to apply it to. And here, I'm going to set that to zero. And when I set that to zero, now it takes that stroke off just the bottom of that cell. Now let's affect these cells over here. I'll grab those. I'll go back to swatches. And I'm going to say I want to fill this with paper. And I want to stroke this with none. Oh, I can see I've already made a mistake here. I still need that little line here, so I better come back here and turn that on. So triple click, then click once there, and set this back to a half point. 
and now I've turned that back on, just for that edge. There's a few more things we can do to fine-tune this table. For example, this text is up here, and this text is down here. Why don't I select this entire row, and I'll change the vertical alignment. We saw we could do a vertical alignment in the cell options dialog box, but in this case, I'm going to use the control panel. This is the top, center, or what we want is bottom. And you can see as soon as I click on that, it aligns along the bottom. Similarly, I could select both of those cells, and I could rotate the cell in 90 degree increments in there. I wish I could do it in finer increments, like 30 degree increment, but you can't do that. Only 90 degree increments. And when I click on this, the text gets turned sideways. Unfortunately, InDesign is not smart enough to automatically stretch this row, so I have to do that manually. I'll just make that a little bit bigger and we can see that now the text will fit inside sideways. Now as I'm looking at this table, the last thing that catches my eye is all of these numbers that have decimal points in them, and they're not aligned at all. It's really quite annoying to look at for me. So I'm going to select that entire column by hovering above the table and clicking. So now I've got the entire column, and I want to align those decimal points. How do you do that? Well, in a previous movie, when we talked about tabs, we talked about a decimal tab stop. So let me show you how you can use a decimal tab stop to align those. I'll open the tabs panel by choosing tabs from the type menu. And then I'm going to add a decimal tab stop, which is this fourth type of tab stop, anywhere I want. And notice as I drop, I can actually see the line indicating where in the cell it's going to drop that tab stop. And as soon as I let go, you'll see that the all of the decimal points align perfectly. Now what's interesting about this is that there's actually no tab in this cell at all. There's no tab in here. Well, InDesign has an interesting feature that if you use a decimal tab stop and there's no tab inside the cell and there's a decimal point in the in the contents of the cell, well, InDesign figures, well, you probably want to align them, which in most cases is exactly right, and it automatically aligns it, even though there's no tab in there. It's really cool. Okay, now this table is really coming together. But there's one problem. I'm going to show you. I'll use the selection tool, and I'll make this shorter, and I'll zoom back with command space. It's a little bit too far back. Let me show you what happens if this table is too long to fit onto one page. Let's say it goes from one page to the next to maybe 50 pages long. Well, the problem is, is look at these headers. I have no idea what this data is. Wouldn't it be nice to put all that same header information on top of this page as well? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in the next movie. The next movie.